defendant's family, even the defendant himself. The prosecutor is the, prosecutor is the guardian of the rights of all the people, which means that his job is to get the right result for the right reasons. Well, see, the thing is, old Timmy there was letting Judge John Stash, you know, the crook, who I have clear, precise, and unquestionable evidence that he's a crook, um, try to say that I'm not competent. Did Timmy speak up and say, oh no, Judge John Stash, I know that Mr. Nemers has supplied us with documentation, and we can see by his videos or in his, his uh, website that he certainly knows the law. You know, because he's being able to navigate through other police departments, you know, and and uh, filming and filing criminal complaints legally, you know. But, you know, obviously he has a malicious prosecution to, to do, so he didn't want to bring that fact up. So, I mean, again, it's he's violating my rights. But it's understandable because it's kangaroo court, and kangaroo courts are designed to violate a per person's rights and shove an agenda down your throat, which is, you know, a forced conviction. You know, a conviction for something that you've never done. Yeah, I mean, like, uh, arresting you and convicting you for legal activities. Because the last time I was maliciously prosecuted, I was ar maliciously arrested and maliciously prosecuted for handing out anti-corruption flyers in the courthouse. Flyers are, I mean, the information's all up on my website. You can see it. It's hard to believe, but these assholes get away with it because a bunch of stupid sheep living in Glenwood. Okay? So anyhow, away I get transported, not to Douglas County, but to Candyway County. Now again, if you know something about my prior history with Candyway County, you know that they don't like me down there because that's where this, this whole thing where me started getting into the law, seriously, started with Candyway County. Okay? Uh, made the front page of the West Central Newspaper, uh, West Central Tribune, West Central Tribune Newspaper, March 14th, 2007 for arresting a judge perfectly legal, showed the whole cart was kangaroo court, they didn't like me down there, okay, filed 44 different complaints, the Canua County uh, jail, never got a single reply back, which of course is against their policy, uh, I had a death threat made from one of the guards, so needless to say, Canua County does not want me back in their jail, because I taught other people how to file complaints also. And, of course, you know, this is all documented. It's up on my website, lionnews00.blogspot.com, and I mention it in my, my YouTubes, you know, at Arrested Judge Kit. So, um, we get tra I get transported down to Canoe County, and um, one of the sergeants is standing at the door there, and he has this very unhappy look on his face because, I mean, I haven't been there in four years. Four years, but they immediately knew who I was. And they said to the transport guy, now we know why you did not tell us who you were bringing down here. Okay? Because they did not want me there. And I just walked up to the, to the sergeant and I said, you know what? I'm just here to do my time. You treat me like an asshole, I'll treat you like an asshole. So we had the understanding, it's going to be respect, and you get respect. Okay? And the people who hated my guts down there, probably still hated my guts. I, you know, I couldn't care less. But the thing is, everyone was nice as pie to me. Or at least they were cordial. That was definitely respect, okay? So, obviously, I taught them a lesson, and you could see many changes that happened down there that uh, I, I think that I had my hand on. Or, I mean, I was, uh, I, I helped instigate certain of them. Okay, so that means that I had time to help other people in jail, which, of course, you know, I'll discuss maybe at a different time. So, obviously, they wanted me out of there, you know, soon, because I was causing trouble for other cases in different counties now because they stuck me down in Canua County and Canua County takes in prisoners from different counties themselves. Okay, so, I mean, I was throwing a monkey wrench in different things. Plus, I was repeatedly asked by the guards, when are you leaving? Okay, when's your next hearing? I said, you know what, I don't know. Because I received two letters from the, uh, the guy who they hired as my attorney. I have a standby counsel, okay? This is the guy who I described as worthless as tits on a boar. Okay, his name is Jeff Kuhn out of Glenwood. So, there's a there's a plug for you, Jeff. Worthless as tits on a boar. So anyhow, and I received uh, two pieces of correspondence from Jeff. And uh, one was saying, yeah, I understand that you don't like lawyers, you know, blah, blah, blah. You know, if you want to get a hold of me, you know, I'm, you know, trying to pretend like he's my friend. He's not my friend. 
And the second one was uh, the day the, the day I left, and I'll, I'll get into that later. But uh, he never never helped me once. So I mean, like I said, worthless as tits on a board. So anyhow, um, the whole time I'm there, I never receive a single piece of paper from the court. Never knew I had a hearing. You know, when's my hearing? So I mean, I'm le I'm legitimately telling these guards I have no idea when this this hearing is. Okay, and uh, so anyhow you know, or when, when I'm leaving. But anyhow, um, I'm there for a competency hearing. Okay. So I go to this competence, competency hearing and this guy is trying to convince me that one, that I'm the cause of the problem there because, um, I should have de-escalated the situation when the, when the, uh, rogue officer is guilty of, um, um, misconduct of an officer and malicious arrest and, well, of course, you know, perjury and everything like that. But I mean, that was my fault that uh, that it got out of control. And of course, that I'm never supposed to swear at a police officer. I mean, never swear at a police officer. Unfortunately, um, I brought up the fact that uh, Black versus Cod allows me to do that, and I can't get in trouble for it. Um, so, all of a sudden, it kind of screwed up his little conversation there. He was trying to, uh, again, we, remember I said I read books on psychology? We had a little gaslighting session there. He's trying to uh, break down my uh, my belief system and trying to in insert his little, indoctrinate me into his thinking that, you know, I should just be a stupid little sheep that never speaks up and never does anything like that. You know, just let them roll right over the top of me. So, um, in a video visit that my mother had come to a couple weeks later, and um, that's, that's how I found out that I had a, a hearing on the 29th of July. Okay, that's when I told her about my little gaslighting session. And that uh, I was going to rip that uh, doctor a new asshole on the, um, at the competency hearing whenever that was going to be. Well, of course, now I'd heard it's going to be the 29th, which happens to be the, the Friday before Water Ammo. So I'm going, you guys are stupid if you're going to let me out at Water Ammo because I'll be out there handing out my 2,000-some flyers. So anyhow, um, and then I also told her that um, the last time I had someone on the witness stand in Kanua County, member maliciously prosecuted down there, it was some sort of county official from the Department of Motor Vehicles, and uh, he smiled at me when I came into the courtroom and was pretty happy when he got up on the witness stand until I started asking him some embarrassing questions, and I ripped him a new asshole. By the time he got off, he was not happy with me. He was pretty damn mad at me. He didn't want to talk to me. He didn't want to look at me even. Okay, so that's what I told my mother I was going to do to old Doc there. So, um, 29th comes and goes, and I asked one of the guards, though, what happened to my hearing? He said, I don't know. And I didn't hear anything. Water ammo comes and goes, and I'm going, oh, well, that's the way that goes. The 3rd of August comes, and at 8.30 in the morning, I get this, um, one of the guards tells me to pack up my bags, because, uh, you know, I'm leaving. I'm going to a hearing up in Pope County. Well, it gets to be about 1.30, and they finally do show up, and, you know, from 8.30 to 1.30, the guards are, you know, saying, hey, it's not our fault, you know, you know, these guys do that, you know, they just, you know, others tell us exactly when they're coming, and, other, and a lot of them just don't, so, and I said, well, that's typical, these assholes here, you know, they don't want to tell you nothing, and, you know, want to keep you in the dark, I said, like I was telling all the guards all the time, I said, you know, because I never got notified of any hearing, I said, you know, they just treat me like a toadstool, you know, keep me in the dark and fill me full of shit, so, that's, that's just the way it was. So I wasn't holding against them. In fact, I, I thanked the, thanked them as I was leaving the, the jail there. So, I mean, I was trying to be as nice as possible to them. You know, but I would bring up embarrassing facts that, uh, that uh, Judge John Staffschultz's wife uh, did assault me at Waterama because I did have my mother send in numerous of these, you know, black and white copies and color copies. And I handed them out and gave some to the guards. So they had some for their their uh, office and stuff like that. And it was a good conversation starter and stopper. So it's not like I wasn't getting my message out. And plenty of the prisoners got this same information. All legal information you can send into the jail. Okay? So again, I'm undermining the confidence of the guards and uh, boosting the confidence of all the, the prisoners. So uh, we get trans I get transported up to... Um, Lawless Pope County, and uh, I think the hearing was actually at 3.15, and so I'm waiting to see, uh, you know, the doc. Well, when I get there, there's one 
person there. And one of these guys, if you watch my videos, you'll see Dave Lauer. He's the one guy that showed up, and he said he was so glad that he showed up because he couldn't believe the stuff that I did to that judge there. And he got to see the judge recuse himself, and for the reason, the exact reasons why, which, like I said, I mentioned before, some of them, but the main one was uh, criminal case number 10104429. Again, his wife assaulting me at Waterama, criminal case number 20101745, all matter of public record, so he's got a vested interest in the case. But anyhow, get in there, and um, didn't see the doc. Where's the doctor? I'm expecting to see him, you know, so I can rip him with an asshole. Well, unfortunately, they just said that um, they're just going to accept all the um, the findings of the report. Because obviously the doc was listening to my video visit because he said that um, Mr. Uh, and intellectually, Mr. Nemers is well endowed. He certainly has solid problem solving, solving abilities. Remember, trained as a doctor. And his problem-solving abilities matches his reading proficiency. Okay, remember, I read psychology books. I was going to rip him a new asshole. I read laws, law books, prosecution principles, the most important law book. See, there you go. So, obviously, Doc was scared off. He didn't want to have a new asshole ripped. The only problem is, Doc, I still remember what you said. I can still file a complaint against you, can't I? Hmm. License might be in, in jeopardy, couldn't it? Yeah. So anyhow, again, I bring up all these embarrassing facts to old Judge John Staffschult that uh, that uh, criminal charges. We run around Swift County with bullhorns, telling all the public that they're all a bunch of crooks. His wife assaults me. Okay, wife assaults me. And. Uh, what was the last one? Oh, that's when I brought up, um, oh, and I didn't get a chance to do that, because then all of a sudden he started interrupting me, saying that, um, that he wanted to recuse himself. Yeah, that's what it was. Okay. So, um, of course, he also wanted me to, um, combine two hearings into one, an evidentiary hearing and the first appearance. Well, let's see, that means that's one less chance for me to talk show, uh, talk to the public, you know, in the courtroom, and I'm not going to do that. So, of course, I just ignore what he's saying, and, and if I ignore what he says, then he has to just automatically give me each hearing separately. Because I'm not going to cooperate with this son of a bitch. I mean, he's got a vested interest in the case. It's a malicious prosecution. You know, I'm not helping these assholes, period. Okay, so... Then they say that, well, you know, I can bail out, you know, for $3,000 unconditional or $300 conditional. Conditions are, again, I can't speak to the the, the, the rogue cop that uh, that maliciously arrested me, and I can't to have a third party contact this rogue thug like I want to talk to him to start with. All I want to talk about is crook Judge John Staffschult, who has to recuse himself from the malicious prosecution. Crook, uh... Tim the little bitch Riley, and uh, Neil the Fallon Larson. Or uh, Neil Nelson. Neil, Neil the Fallon Larson. Nelson. Neil the Fallon Nelson, not Larson. I'm thinking of Tommy the little bitch Larson, the former sheriff. Okay? So again, all on my website. So that's what happened. So um, for those people, again, if you want to show up at my hearing on August 15th, 2010, or 2011, initial appearance, Rule 8. Remember, this is my third time, this will be my third time in court. It's at 3 p.m., District Court Charles Glasrud, okay? He's the new guy. We'll rip him a new asshole that day. So show up. Pope County District Court, 130 East Minnesota Avenue, Suite 309, Glona, Minnesota, 56334. And that phone number is 320-634-5222. Again, call these assholes before you show up. Because they like to change, cancel, you know, try to make sure people can't see what I do in court. Friends and foes are invited. I don't care if you hate my guts. Show up and I'll show you how, how I make mincemeat of your crooks down there. Okay? Thank you for your time.